Hey yo, what is up knights? Aegis Rick here, bringing you guys an overview and speculation series on the recently unveiled Project Barbecue, a new 3D action MMO being developed by the Action Studio team at Neopol. As a series, we'll be staying up to date with all Project Barbecue related news and announcements, and we'll be making new episodes as more stories related to the project come to light. In this series opener, we'll be covering the significance of Neopol's flagship title, Dungeon and Fighter, who the director is and his past works, a little bit about the game development company Neopol, and just who exactly is going to be publishing this game. Use the timestamps in the description of this video to jump to the subjects that you're actually interested in. But before we get into all of that, first a tiny bit about myself. My YouTube channel has been focused on action MMO since its very inception some 10 years ago. I've played and made countless videos on various titles in the genre, such as Content of the Ninth Seal, Dragon S, Black Desert Online, Dark Blood when it was still around, and my most current game that I've played since its release has been Dungeon Fighter Online, or DFO for short. Now, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say flat out that there are few people nearly as excited as I am for this game to be released. It will be combining my all-time favorite genre of gaming with one of my favorite MMO IPs to potentially concoct an absolute beast of a game. It's like a dream come true for me for more reasons than one. <gasps> but for those uninitiated as to why I'm so excited, let me first tell you how this 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up that I've been playing for so long is related to Project BBQ. Korean Dungeon and Fighter, or KDNF for short, has been the magnum opus of the game development company Neopol for nearly 14 years, of which they have been steadily delivering content for this entire time. Now this might come as a surprise to you when I say this, but this simple looking 2D side scrolling beat em up is straight up the most popular MMO game in the entire world. I am not joking, look it up. Sure, it may not be that big over here in the West, but it is a global leader when it comes to total accounts and active player base, and has been so for a very long time. 14 years sure is a long time to be developing for an MMO, and it really shows with how many unique classes the game features, 61 to be exact, as well as a plethora of events and content that has held it up for so long. But it finally seems as though Neopol is ready to take the next logical step and use their intellectual property to springboard into the third dimension with Project Barbecue. To any outsider looking in, this might just look like another generic 3D action MMO. But to the fans of the original game, it's clear as to what this game actually is. A 3D action reimagining of the 2D beat-em-up that we've loved for so long. And you don't have to look very hard to see it. The characters, the lore, settings, you have the exact same subclasses utilizing the same exact skills and animation. The enemies and even some of the locations all are the same. Except of course in 3D now. You guys know why the development project has been coined Project BBQ? Kind of an odd name, right? What the hell does BBQ even stand for? Well, it's short for barbecue, of course. The name of the male gunner's generic grab skill, which is straight up Looney Tunes in animation, but is also one of the skills that has existed ever since the very beginning of the game, some 14 years ago. It's kind of like an inside joke, but it's iconic to say the very least. My overview and speculation will be coming from the lens of a guy who has first-hand experience in the source material. You really have to understand from what angle this game is coming from. This is isn't just another action game. This is a game that has to contend and perhaps even surpass the expectations of their already wildly successful title. So quite frankly guys, if you're getting your news on this project from someone who isn't a veteran of the original Dungeon & Fighter, you really are only getting half the story. But speaking about stories, how about we go back a few weeks to September 24th, 2018, where Project BBQ's story officially began. This is The Road to Project BBQ. Project BBQ was unveiled on September 24th, Christmas Eve, during the 2018 KDNF Winter Festival. These festivals are held twice every year, once in summer and another in winter, and are designed to reveal upcoming content updates for the game, as well as showcase some PvE and PvP tournament finals that have been going on throughout the year. It should be noted that these are wildly popular events, tickets of which sell out immediately due to the game's massive popularity in Korea. At the end of all of the main news and updates for KDNF, however, an old and revered director to KDNF took the stage and announced two things that would ultimately steal the show. One, that they were nearing the completion of DFO Mobile, their mobile port of Dungeon and & Fighter, and two, of course, 
the unveiling of Project Barbecue. Of course, this was completely unexpected, yet exciting news for fans of the original game. And as far as I've seen, it's even caught the interest of people who may never even heard of DFO before. In this unveiling, the director revealed a bit of promotional art showcasing some of the classes to be expected in the game, as well as a gameplay trailer showcasing how the combat would look like. Now, this director's history deserves some mentioning, and to do that, we'll need to look a little into KDNF's history first. His name is, pardon the pronunciation, Yoon Young Jin, and his tenure as director of KDNF lasted officially from 2015 to late 2017. To a lot of people in Korea, Yoon Young Jin was an accomplished director. He was the first one to ever appear in public in front of the users, and for that reason was to many the face of KDNF at large. KDNF experienced something of a golden age during that time, at least by comparison to recent developments. His biggest accomplishments come with the release of Female Priest and Luke Raid content, which brought with it both the largest influx of new players and highest popularity boost that the game has ever experienced. KDNF seemed to be riding pretty high until suddenly, in late 2017, he decided to resign as director to pursue other projects within the company. Of course, we now know what those projects were, but that decision proved to be quite detrimental to KDNF in hindsight. His departure left in its wake a decline in the game's popularity ever since. To put it in perspective, the play rate of DFO at internet cafes, which are a big deal over there in Asia, went from 7% during his tenure down to about 1.35% as of now. Without getting into too much detail, this was in large part due to his replacement, Kim Sung Wok, not being up for the role. I mean, in the span of less than a year, he's already managed to create memes such as these, seemingly poised, no, destined to wipe out half of KDNF's population. For this reason, also unveiled in the 2018 Winter Festival was the announcement of his resignation and replacement by yet another director in Kang Jung Ho. Now yes, this little story isn't directly related to Project Barbecue, but I've retold it just to say Young Myung Jin has a proven track record of success with this IP. Quite frankly, even if it's at the detriment of KDNF, he seems to be one of the most qualified people at Neopold to head this project towards success. And from what we've already seen, he has been extremely faithful to the source material of Dungeon Fighter, which of course is always an exciting sign for the majority of fans. I mean, great thing he didn't take after these so-called directors when it came to adapting an already popular franchise. <coughs> now I've talked a bit about KDNF and the director, but not much about the developers themselves, Neopol. And we can't talk about Neopol without first mentioning <sighs> Nexon. Yeah, 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 enough already. Of course, most people that stumble across this video would know about the Korean-based publishing company Nexon. They've published such titles as MapleStory and MapleStory 2, Vindictus, and at one infamous point in time, Dungeon Fighter Online itself. But we don't talk about those dark ages. However, notice how I said Nexon only published these games. They are merely distributing the game and managing the microtransactions. Neopol, on the other hand, is a complete subsidiary to Nexon, and their expertise is in game development. But when I say they are a development team, I don't just mean it's some guys in a corner office at Nexon headquarters. I've been there, by the way. Cool place. Honestly, wouldn't mind a corner office if it was there. But no, no, no. Neopol headquarters is massive, located on the exotic Jeju Island in Korea. They even have a stadium in it and all kinds of cool shit, and it's not undeservedly so either. You've got to keep in mind, Neopol and Hell Nexon for that matter are wildly popular and successful companies, far more so than popular opinion would suggest over here in the West. Within this development company, you have what I would consider an elite team headed up by Young Myung Jin called Action Studio, which is working both on the faithful mobile port of DFO as well as Project Barbecue. Though I can only assume there are many teams tasked to many different projects. Aside from Action Team working on these projects, they do indeed have other titles released, more closely related to iOS and mobile games such as Evil Factory and After the End Forsaken Destiny. I'm also personally acquainted with a team dedicated to the global publication of KDNF that I play called Dungeon Fighter Online Global or DFOG for short. So yes, we are in a situation where a development company is publishing their own game. And as far as the experience I've had goes, they've done it spectacularly despite being a limited team. I love you guys. But that concludes our little history lesson. Now let's answer the burning question. Who is going to be publishing this game when, if ever, it comes to the West? Well, I can speculate with a good 99% certainty that Nexon will be the ones to publish this game, both in Korea and here in the West. 
I mean, Neopool is not a wholly owned subsidiary company for nothing. Nexon would expect to get something out of this arrangement, so it's a far cry to hope that anybody else would be publishing it. I mean, look, they put their logo right here on the trailer. And say what you want, but Nexon is a world-renowned parent company with a lot of resources to pump into doing pretty much anything that they want, especially in the promotion department, at least when they actually want to. I know this fact personally with how well advertised and received MapleStory 2 was at least on launch day. And while it may be true that DFOG is successfully being published by Neopol currently, this is clearly only because Nexon failed with their attempt at publishing the IP first. Funnily enough, this exact situation happened with Dragon S when they got tired of that game and gave the publishing rights back to the developers over at Identity Games. A proverbial pump and dump if you will when the game perhaps started to lose its profitability. So if your hope is that Nexon doesn't get a hold of it, well, it would probably only be under these exact circumstances. And no, I'm not looking for the game to fail just so that I can see it back in the hands of the developers. We simply gotta hope that Nexon has learned from their past mistakes mistakes and doesn't get too greedy or complacent with it, or it will really taint an otherwise potentially great game. Trust me, I have ample experience with publishers screwing otherwise great games over. But there is a silver lining here. Say Nexon does screw it up majorly and it all goes under, right? Well, at least we know there is a safety net in Neopole that could always re-release the game globally soon afterwards, and it will probably be a whole lot better for it. <laughs> now, as I was editing up this video, news just dropped about Nexon putting close to 50% of their stocks in the company up for sale. This carries with it major implications that quite honestly I was not ready to talk about in this video. Depending on who decides to purchase these stocks, if anybody, could drastically change the course for Nexon's existing and future titles. Many are already speculating some dastardly spooky developments to be made already. But I'm going to end this video on this cliffhanger and we'll get back to this developing story a little bit further down the line. But that concludes our first episode in the series. In the next, we'll be covering the characters that were announced as well as what can be expected with those characters in terms of customization and whether or not they're going to be gender locked. All that and more in episode 2 of The Road to Project Barbecue. Thanks for watching and I will catch you nights later.